Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Mr. Long Island's Search for Truth and Beauty. My name is Michael Watt, aka Mr. Long Island, and each week we search uh, for issues that need to be discussed, the truths that Long Island needs to hear, and we also look for the beauty that makes Long Island such a special place to live, work, and raise a family. Our guest this week is Marlene Budd. Marlene is an acting Supreme, State Supreme Court Justice yes. in Central Islip, and uh, Marlene is here to talk about a mentoring program that she works with with foster children. Uh, but also as a part of Mr. Long Island's Search for Truth and Beauty, each week we talk about pizza. And the reason for that is, as diverse a region as Long Island is, with all these different towns, the one thing that every town in Long Island has in common is great pizza, uh, or at least one pizza place. So no matter who you are, where you are, if you live in Long Island, you know of at least one great, great pizza place, and our goal is to just accumulate a, an incredible list of great pizza. So, Marlene your favorite pizza place on Long Island? It's uh, Coliseo in Port Jeff. Okay, and what makes it so so good? Uh, the grandma pizza. The grandma pizza. Yeah, that, that's delicious. the thin crust? Yes. With the, um, I don't know what's His on it. But marinara oh, that's in it. the okay. middle, yes. Yeah, those Mostly are, that. All those fancy Italian terms always yes. seem to escape me. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so it's Coliseo in Port Jefferson, right downtown in the village? Uh, it's actually uh, just south of uh, 347. Okay. On, I guess it would take 112. 112. Okay. Yes. So it's not in the village. It's on the way. In, right. Uh, not in the downtown area, I should say. Right. On the way. All right. We'll have to check it out. We'll add that to the list. Yeah, it's great. Terrific. So, again, thank you very much for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. And we want to discuss, now you were telling me about a uh, mentoring program. Now, there's lots of mentoring programs on Long Island. Um, and you work, or this program is designed to work with uh, foster children. Correct. All right, let's just briefly walk us through what is a mentoring program? What, what is a mentor and mentee relationship? Just give us a little background on that, please. Okay, well, the mentoring program is just basically uh, people who are in, have been in similarly situated um, positions uh, with, the, with the mentees. And for example, in, in my case, uh, I actually went through the foster care system. Okay. So I started my life as a foster child. And it wasn't until I was 13 when I was actually adopted. So we're looking at trying to actually get some of the children between the ages of 14 and 18 uh, who have been foster children and now who are either adopted or about to be adopted. Um, because uh, those are the children who um, don't have any services once they're adopted because uh, the Department of Social Services uh, concludes their services once they are adopted. So we want to make sure that these, these kids don't fall through the cracks. And so people like myself as the mentors and, and these children, um, you know, just trying to make them uh, feel uh, like they belong. Okay. And, and helping them along the way. Well, let's... let's um the mentor, the mentor mentee relationship, it can be applied to business, it can be applied to anywhere where you have one person who maybe has experience in a certain realm. Right. Uh, and they want to share the benefits of that experience exactly. with somebody who maybe is a few years younger or a lot of years younger. And uh, basically, the idea is to share the benefits of your experience so that that person exactly. can make their own mistakes and mm -hmm. or at least uh, not go down as many dead ends. So that's, that's in correct. general the mentor mentee relationship. Yes. The program you're involved in works with foster children. Correct. And mostly teenagers? Yes, between like between the ages of 14 <coughs> and 18. I mean, we may have some that are a little younger. Okay. Um, but probably none that are older than 18. And now, foster child, uh, would you mind just walking us through what, because you hear the expression, but sometimes, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people, maybe they don't know exactly, you know, what, how does uh, somebody become a foster child? Or what, what is that involved? Okay. Well, I was a family court judge before being moved over to, to Supreme Court. And these are situations, by and large, where parents have neglected their children. So they are placed in foster homes. Okay. So this is uh, you know, traumatic for these children to be placed in foster care and to have to go through years of being in foster care and then to get to the point where they're adopted. Um, these are children who have, um, you know, some, you know, obviously some emotional issues about their parents that weren't able to uh, do what they needed to do to get them back. And uh, so these are the kids who really need, I think, a lot of uh, assistance and dealing with not just emotional issues, but uh, their goals in life and making sure that they become successful members of, of society. And, and um, so that's what we're looking to do with these, well, with and these kids. Particularly for teenagers, uh, we 
I mean, it's hard enough being a teenager, even in the most ideal environment. Right. Uh, and and you kind of making that transition from being maybe an innocent little kid to seeing how the world works for adults, and it, it's not always a pleasant place. Uh, you know, I think we like to think of Long Island as this idyllic suburbia where there's you know the the, fa the family unit is intact and everyone's got two cars in the garage and all that sort of thing. Does that make it more challenging for a foster child to be, as opposed to maybe in an in a, a urban environment, but in a suburban area? Uh, probably, yeah. I, I'm sure. You know, it's you see when they go to school, most of their their friends have their mother and father, um, their siblings. Um, a lot of these kids who are in foster care, I mean, they do try to keep them in the same family if there's if there's more than one. Right. But some, sometimes that's not feasible. So um, it, it's difficult for them. They feel, you know, they feel different, and they go through their teenage years feeling that way. And we just want them to know that um, while they have a different circumstance than, than some of their peers, that uh, they, they can have the same goals, the same aspirations, and the same drive that others do to succeed in life. And, and like I was saying before, it's tough enough being a teenager to be a teenager without that rudder of a mother right. and father or right. a mother or, you know, uh, that could really be problematic and make them very vulnerable, right? So the, the, mentor, the mentor can step in and just provide that kind of stability and, and guidance? Yeah, we can uh, help them and let them know that, uh, you know, they are loved. Uh, that, you know, so that's they the first order of businesses, let them know that there are people who are who caring care for about them. them. Okay. Yes, I mean, and that there's, we try to give them hope, a sense of hope, and um, inspire them uh, to achieve their goals in life. Um, one of the things we want to start out doing is a, a vision board. Okay. And you know, they have certain passions. Tell us, let's talk a little bit about vision boards, because uh, okay. it ties into really the self-fulfilling prophecies and just having an idea of where you're going with your life. So just right. walk us through the idea of a vision board, yeah, if you don't mind. The vision board is, is basically, I mean, before you work on the vision board, it's, it's to find out what your passion is. Okay. And once you find out what, what your passion is, that is what brings you joy, what makes you happy, um, you'd have to have sort of a roadmap to get there. Okay. So the vision board is to, you know, to put your goals down and then also, you know, your values and, and what it is that you want in life and what makes you happy and to create a, 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 ro a road map for that. Okay, so it's like to, a blueprint. Where, you have a vision exactly. of where you want to be in, in a year, five years, ten years. Exactly, and, right. And you put that in writing and that just kind of creates something for you to refer to right. as, you, as you're developing and say, yeah, okay, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to be. Right, exactly. And the mentor would work with the uh, young person on creating that vision um, board? Yes, on creating the vision board and, um, and also just working with them on helping them to get to achieve their goals and, and what they would need to do to achieve their goals. We'll also help them with, with just life skills, um, how to go on an interview, okay. um, college prep, uh, banking skills, resume writing, things like that, we'll be going through with them as well because these are all part of what they need to do in life to, to achieve their goals. Well, how important is it to instill a sense of, uh, even though you're a forced child, all these things are still possible for you? I mean, kind of break down that, well, I, you know, that's, uh, I can't be a lawyer, I can never go to law school, or I, can, I couldn't be a judge because I can never go to law school. How important is it for the mentor to uh, share or encourage that uh, young person uh, to really to dream and dream and not be afraid to dream big. Right, right. Well, I'll, I will be talking to these children about my own story. Okay. And I hope that by listening to what I went through in my life, that they will say to themselves, well, you know, if she can do it, I can do it. And I will let them know that, that anything is possible. Um, if they just, you know, stay focused and stay positive. It's so important to be positive. I was very, very fortunate and blessed in that I always took from every situation something positive from it, and without even knowing it, okay. really. I didn't go through life thinking uh, that I was actually being a positive person. I didn't know that until I got older. Isn't that funny? But I, yes, I never, I never had a negative thought. I okay. said, okay, this is my goal. I want to go to law school. Then it was I want to be in politics, and then it was be a judge, and I just... Kept, I stayed focused, I kept on course, and, and that's how I get to where I am 
by not being negative, by staying positive and focusing on my, my goals and, and my values and what was important to me. And, and for me, it's really, it is helping other people. It's always been that from the beginning. So and, I think yeah. with a positive um, goal, it also helps too. And, and, but you grew up with some of these same challenges that these foster children face now. So they yes. can look at what you've accomplished and yes. you've accomplished a great deal in your career and say, all right, you know, she dealt with a lot of things that I'm dealing with now. Right. Then that, I would imagine that they find that very empowering. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, you know, you go through. Well, that's the idea of the mentor. You know, when you when right. you can say to that young person, hey, that you know, you were me 30 years ago or 20 years ago. I, exactly. I would imagine it's very powerful. Exactly, and they may be teased or bullied, and I I went through that too. Okay. So I know how to handle that, and or at least to tell them what they might want to think about with respect to that when they have to be confronted with people who just don't understand. Um, and also, I think that the foster kids need to know that it's not them. It's, it's not them. Okay. It was somebody else. Right. It's uh, somebody else that had a problem and that you were the unfortunate victim. Mm -hmm. um, but letting them know that um, despite that, that you know, they, can, they can move forward in a positive way and take something good from a bad situation. Okay. Maybe they'll be you know, it gives them strength. Um, it gives them uh, a sense of, um, you know, not, uh, I guess, feeling entitled to things. You know, you appreciate things more when you have to, when you go through a struggle. Right. So I think that there are some positive things that the kids can take from a bad situation, and, and we'll try to to focus on that instead of the negatives of being in foster care. And I would imagine a lot of it too is not letting them wallow in the victim right. part of it. You right, know. exactly. And also the, they may have a lot of anger and bitterness and resentment towards their parents and try to help them to learn to forgive and that's very, very difficult. But it's so important to do and, and I had to do it myself and, and go through that process because mm -hmm. if you go around in life being bitter and angry at something that you had no control over, you, you'll, you'll just, you'll go nowhere. Right. And um, so we want well, to try to where, help Well, that's them. where the drug abuse starts and, and yes. the uh, uh, yes. promiscuity and, and when you start searching for things that aren't there exactly. because of the pain that you're feeling. Right, right. There's that void right. and um, people want to fill that void. Uh, and, and sometimes it's with something that's, that's negative like the drugs and alcohol. Uh, but we want to make sure that these kids stay on the right course. About how many kids are we talking about? Um, probably 10 to 15. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's not that many. Right, right. And, and we're hoping to obviously um, to continue doing this and helping as many foster children as we can. How would somebody who might be interested uh, get involved and become a mentor? Is there any kind of special training, or do you need to talk to somebody, or how is that, uh, how is that handled? Well, they would actually, I guess, go through um, our group and, and get in touch with uh, either myself or uh, someone on the staff. Uh, there's Robert Goldman is one of the people. He's with uh, Takoon. Okay. And I believe there is a website for Takoon. Uh, it's T I K K U N. T I K K U N. U -N and I, it, it might be dot org. Um, right. But if you Google Rob, yes. Robert Goldman Robert and Tycoon, Goldman, tycoon T I K K U N. Okay. Yes, and then there's a Kim Gucciardo who is working with us, and um, another woman, Taylor. So the mentor would be part of a support group as well. You're not just yes. assigned a kid and it's up to you. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, you know, we we go through a screening process for for the mentors. But you sure. also, you know, as you're dealing with the young person, as issues come up, you're you can reach out to the support of the other mentors and oh, right. figure out how to handle that. Correct. Or, Correct. Okay. Yeah, it'll be done mostly as a group. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, can you walk us through that a little bit? We said it'll it'll be done mostly as a group. What'll be done? Right. I, well, the vision board and. Okay. And um, we'll actually be going on some, some field trips to, uh, for example, maybe a vet's office. Okay. Because uh, they might be interested in, in a animals. A veterinarian's office. Right. Okay. And, um, or a hospital or a police station or a courthouse. So depending on what they are, their interests are, we are going to sort of tailor that to, to meet their needs and, and what their interests are. Okay. And so you, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's not like a, like a big brother, big sister situation where you spend Correct. the day with them. And, oh, right. okay, so it's part of a group environment. It's a group environment, and oh, we terrific. think that that would, is more beneficial to these sure. children. Um, all right, so um, 
and then I just want to finish the thought on the vision board because I think that's so important, something I wasn't even aware of until fairly recently. Okay. Uh, just having an idea to have a plan. You know, right. Somebody said to, to go through life without a plan is like getting in a boat and just turning the motor on and going wherever the boat takes you. Right, you know? right. And then the other part of it is too many of us go through life looking at the wake when we really need to be looking over the front of the boat. Uh, right. which it's so much easier to look at the weight and, and consider all the things that happened to you. And right. the more time you think about stuff from the past, you're missing out right. on the future. Exactly. How important is that to convey that to these young people? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's the whole purpose uh, of the vision board is it doesn't talk about the past. It right. only talks about the present, what your skills are, because we all are born with, with a certain skill. We're here for a purpose. And um, so to focus on that and then moving forward in, in a positive way. And, and I have a vision board myself. I look at my vision board, I, th I think, every day. Okay. And because I want to wake up in the morning and look at something and say, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is why you know, I do what I do and um, to get to this particular goal that I have. So, um, and I think that the kids hearing that even may help them to say, okay, this isn't just some, some you know, project that they have us working on. This is something that you really need to apply in real life. And, and adults do this, and, and I think it's actually um, something that has some traction lately because I've, I've heard more people doing vision sure. boards. Sure, and, and the value of, to a young, particularly to a teenager, knowing that there's somebody there who cares enough to give their time uh, and for a foster care teenager, I think would be incredibly uh, invaluable. Yes. Um, I just want to finish up on, on a, one basic thought. Now, it's been said there's two basic emotions in the world, uh, love and fear. And one of our previous guests, Ken, Karen Garvey, describes uh, fear as the absence of love in your life. Mm -hmm. Would you describe this program really as kind of taking some of that fear that comes with being cast out as a young person mm -hmm. And, and just replacing yes. it with the love. Right, that's very true. I mean, it's it's uh, the motto is heal a heart, see okay. the future. So it's it's all about it, it, you know love and letting these letting these children know that someone cares about them, that they they were not abandoned, that they will not go through their life that way, and we want to start them on the right on the right track and, and knowing that they that they matter. And how key is forgiveness in that process? I think it's very important um, for many of these children who have uh, parents who were addicted to drugs or who did something else that, that placed these children in foster care. And I've, I've seen it myself. I've seen these teenagers be angry at their adoptions when it's supposed to be a happy occasion. Right. And it's because of that. They always thought that their parents were going to do whatever they needed to do to get them back, and they didn't. And they sort of feel like their, you know, their parents failed them on a number of different levels, not just, not just having them placed in foster care, but they were given another chance, and they, they didn't do what they had to do. So they feel like, well, my parents didn't love me enough, or they, they couldn't do enough. So um, there's, there's that, that we you know, want to make sure that these kids, they don't, they don't feel that way. And, and you understand the power and the value, if you will, right. of, of embracing that. As difficult as it may seem when you're 15 and you're angry, right. that's the best time. So you're not carrying that with you exactly, as you go into adulthood. Exactly, exactly. And getting people to forgive is, is very difficult. But I'm hoping that um, by either hearing my story and some of the other stories um, of some of the other mentors, that they will be able to eventually be able to do that. Now, now are you looking f to get more mentors? Do you, do yes, you have, okay. actually, yes, we are. Okay. We, we have several, but we, we're always looking for more mentors. All right, so if somebody's interested, they could Google Robert, uh, Robert Goldman yes. and Tykun, T-I-K-K-U-N. T-I-K-K-U-N, okay. Yes. Or they can reach me or, or the, the Daily Blue, and we'll certainly right. put somebody in touch with that. So, uh, Marlene, this has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for oh, your thank time. thank you for having me. I really and appreciate it. And it's it. really a perfect example of both the truth and the beauty. The truth being that these are issues that we as a region need to discuss. I mean, there are people that uh, need help. And the beauty of it is there are so many Long Islanders like yourself who are willing to give up your time and to create programs like this uh, so that you can work with the other people who maybe weren't as fortunate or in your case, you see that you know they're where you were, and you want to show them a way out, which is really is a, a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for well, what thank you do, you. Thank you for and thank me. you for your time this afternoon. It's I been really terrific. It. Thank Great. you. Thanks.
This is another episode of Mr. Long Island's Search for Truth and Beauty. My name is Michael Watt, a.k.a. Mr. Long Island, and we thank you for your time as well. Have a good weekend.